Hi everybody, welcome back to a weekend edition of The Daily Dose. My name is Lauren and I'm part of the visitor engagement team here at the Calgary Zoo. Today we are exploring climate and we are in the rainforest building where climate is especially important. Every species in our care here at the Calgary Zoo has an ideal temperature range or humidity range where they're most comfortable. For some species that range is very wide, like for animals in Canadian wilds who are adapted to live here in Canada in our cold, cold winters and warm and dry summers. So they have a very wide range in which they're tolerant or comfortable. In the rainforest building, it's a little bit different. Most of the animals that live in this space have a very narrow temperature range where they are most comfortable. So it's really important that we're meeting all of their needs. The rainforest building overall has a climate that is nice and warm and humid, but every individual species that calls this building home has separate requirements. That means everyone needs what's called a microclimate. Our amazing team of building operators is able to manage the microclimates in this building, making sure that everybody from the cichlid fish, chameleons, dwarf crocodiles, colobus monkeys, birds in the rainforest, boa constrictors, and mandrills and gorillas have exactly what they need to be successful here in this habitat. We're gonna explore some of these microclimates. So come on with me, let's go through the rainforest and talk about some of the amazing features that this building has. Our first stop is here at our snake habitat. This habitat is home to two different species of boa, Dumeril's ground boas and Malagasy tree boas. The rainforest in general is home to many species of reptiles and reptiles are what we call an ectotherm. You might have heard the term cold-blooded before. Cold-blooded doesn't mean their blood is actually cold. It just means that they cannot produce their own heat. They need an external heat source. I have spotted a chameleon hiding in the foliage here at this habitat. This habitat is also the winter home of Sheldon, our leopard tortoise. Now, chameleons in the wild, and just like all species, have different temperatures during the daytime and at nighttime. It's a really important part of their biology to make sure that their temperatures in their habitat fluctuate in a natural way. On the screen here, you can see a temperature graph of what it looks like for the chameleons during the day and the nighttime when the temperature gets a little bit cooler. So these habitats have to be able to cycle through a normal weather pattern in order to make sure that the species knows what time daytime is, what time nighttime is, and they are able to have those variable temperature fluctuations throughout their day. Rainforest primates like it hot and humid. We're here at the gorilla habitat and gorillas can be susceptible to dry skin, particularly here in Calgary where we don't have a lot of humidity. So there is actually steam embedded in the ductwork of the gorilla habitat to continuously increase the humidity of this space to ensure that the gorilla's skin stays nice and moist all the time. Now for every habitat at the rainforest, it's really important that our building operations team can check on those habitats throughout the day to make sure that we're meeting all of our animals' needs. On your screen right now, you can see a map of the rainforest building where we can see the temperature and relative humidity of every individual microclimate here at the rainforest building at any given time, day or night, 24 seven, 365 days per year. We're here at the dwarf crocodile habitat. This pool is warm. Like we mentioned, crocodiles are a reptile. They are an ectotherm. That means that they can't supply their own heat source. So the crocodile habitat has heated lamps as well as a heated pool with a sand filter to filter out any of that little particulate material. For a deeper explanation of how sand filters work, check out the daily dose on the penguin filtration system. It's very similar to this one. This habitat is really cool because it has a retractable roof. In the winter time, that roof is closed so that we can keep this habitat nice and warm for the colobus monkeys or the mandrills. But in the summer, when it's hot outside, we can actually pull the roof back, open things up, and allow that sunshine and heat to come on into this habitat. The last stop on this microclimate tour is the rainforest aviary. This incredible habitat houses many different species of birds. 
So we have to make sure that it's humid enough and that the temperature is right in the perfect sweet spot where everybody's preferred temperature range overlaps. Also, these are birds. If you watch the Daily Dose about penguin filtration, you know that birds can be susceptible to different types of pathogens. So we have to make sure that we disinfect their pool. So we also use ozone here in this building. If you remember, we can manufacture ozone here on site using room air, where we take out the nitrogen, compress the oxygen, and use electricity to produce O3 atoms, which is an amazingly powerful disinfectant for viruses and bacteria. So the Rainforest Aviary has that as part of its filtration system. Thank you so much for joining me on this weekend edition of The Daily Dose to explore some of the microclimates here within the bigger climate of this rainforest building. An extra special thank you to all of our amazing team of building operators who work to make sure that every animal in this habitat has the right microclimate. Thanks so much for watching and thank you for supporting wildlife conservation.